Good evening and welcome to Trinity Cathedral in Cleveland, Ohio. I'm Todd Wilson. I have the pleasure of serving as music director here at Trinity, and I'm also artistic director of music and art at Trinity Cathedral. Music and art has for over 40 years uh, presented a wide variety of free concerts here in this beautiful space. In particular, our popular Wednesday noon brown bag concert series. The brown bags just concluded their 42nd season and are certainly the longest running series of free concerts in the greater Cleveland area. Our audience at those Wednesday noons is about as diverse as any audience you could ever picture. And from week to week, we frequently have listeners from preschool age all the way through to often large groups of senior citizens. For many of those senior citizens, they would not uh, otherwise have access to live music making. And in this summer, when live music making is a really scarce commodity for all of us, it's a special pleasure for us to present this second concert featuring cellist Mark Kosauer, playing all six of the iconic solo suites for cello by Johann Sebastian Bach. Bach's music uh, engages the entire range of human emotions, maybe more, more readily and deeply and genuinely than that of any other composer. And in these challenging times that we live in, Bach's music allows each of us to engage and be enriched by it in our own way. And I hope you'll have that experience. I'm pretty sure you will have that experience in this next hour plus. We're presenting these live stream concerts free of charge as a gift to listeners in Northeastern Ohio and far beyond actually. There is however, an opportunity for you to donate should you wish, and we hope you will. And you can donate at any point in the program just by following the uh, prompt at the bottom of your screen, or you can simply send a check made out to Music and Art at Trinity Cathedral Mail it to 2230 Euclid Avenue, Cleveland, Ohio, 44115. All the funds that are donated for these concerts will be shared equally between the COVID relief efforts of Arts Cleveland. Arts Cleveland is a wonderful organization that assists arts groups of many sizes, large and small, across the greater Cleveland area, and music and art here at Trinity Cathedral. Anything that you might choose to donate, please know how very, very grateful we are for it. Mark Kosauer is principal cellist of the Cleveland Orchestra and a world-renowned performer and teacher. It's a real joy to welcome Mark back here to Trinity for this second program tonight. And uh, I know that you'll all join me in extending a really warm virtual welcome to Mark Kosauer. Mark's going to tell us a little bit about this uh, very special fourth suite that starts the program tonight. So I'm going to turn it over to Mark. Thank you, Todd. It's very special to be back here again for the second uh, COVID-19 benefit concert uh, where I'm performing uh, the six cello suites of J.S. Bach as a part of uh, Bach for Humanity. Um, I was thinking about uh, the number six, and if you think about the great composers, so Bach chose to write ch uh, six cello suites, uh, six violin sonatas and partitas. Uh, Beethoven wrote six opus 18 string quartets. Mozart wrote uh, six, um, Quartets dedicated to his teacher, uh, Franz Josef Haydn. Um, and of course, numerology and music uh, means different things to different composers and sometimes is even perhaps even overanalyzed. But in the case of Bach, uh, you know, certainly uh, the number three goes into six. Um, I'm performing two sets of three suites. And of course, the number three for Bach, the most significant. Uh, numerological meaning is that it, of course, represents the Trinity. And so, and uh, by coincidence, this is Trinity Cathedral. 
So anyway, endlessly interesting. Um, the first suite I'll be performing uh, tonight is the fourth suite. Um, it's in the key of E flat. That is, uh, let's see, I, I think that is the only suite that is uh, written for a cello by Bach that isn't based on an open string. So it has uh, certain uh, challenges instrumentally. And uh, musically, um, we have to look at the key of E flat. Um, historically, it was uh, associated with themes of nobility. Um, and also, in, it was associated with an idea of having an intimate conversation with God. And that, to me, is very significant, especially the, the second part, because I think that's actually really going on in this suite. Um, another thing I'd like to uh, mention is um, something Bach said. He was quoted once saying, without my morning coffee, I'm nothing better than a old piece of roasted goat. And the reason I think that quote is significant is because it shows uh, a lighter side of Bach. I mean, we're so used to seeing his, uh, you know, these portraits, a very serious man, of course, a very devout Christian and Lutheran, but no, he actually uh, was actually a very humorous person and had a lighter side as well. I think that's represented in this uh, suite. There's a lot of hemiola, uh, rhythmical changes, uh, an odd number of groupings of bars, um, so there's definitely a, a lighter, wittier, a funny side to this intimate conversation going on with God. Um, I'd like to say something uh, briefly about uh, an orchestra, uh, well, an organization that means a lot to me and a lot to this community, the Cleveland Orchestra. Um, in this COVID-19 time, uh, they've been working tirelessly, as have many people, to reinvent the wheel and, and find innovative and new ways to reach out to people. Um, I know from being uh, a member of the Cleveland Orchestra for now 10 years how hard and how much time and devotion is put forth not only by the mus musicians but by the administration and, and sometimes you know just working nonstop. And the reason I mention this is I would like to dedicate this next suite to a very special person in the personnel office of the Cleveland Orchestra to Carrie Marcantonio, who um, does her job uh, better than anybody I could imagine. And, um, you know, it's kind of like teaching. If you're a teacher, um, you have to do more than just share the information and get the student to understand what you're saying. You, um, you need to look out for them and you have to care about them and think about their future and what's good for, for them. And, and Carrie does that looking out for the musician and what's good for the Cleveland Orchestra and the institution. So um, I just would like to dedicate this performance to her.
Thank you very much. There are days when performing is a hot job, and today is one of those. <laughs> um, we are not in such a different position than we were at the beginning of June when um, the first of these two concerts was presented. Um, certainly, we learn about COVID-19 and um, the challenges we face. But, uh, and certainly there, are, there is optimistic news on the horizon with possible vaccines, but basically the, the, the place that we are right now isn't, hasn't really changed. And there is a lot of, uh, there are a lot of people that are suffering, whether it be from COVID-19 or economically or in, from circumstances related to this time. And I think it's worth noting that um, pain and suffering was not 
uh, so, well, it was something that Johann Sebastian Bach experienced a lot in his life. He, it was no, he was no stranger to uh, being under these conditions. Uh, to start with, his first wife passed away uh, when he was uh, 20-some years old. Um, he had 20 children, 10 of which died in infancy. So you can imagine, and, and while perhaps, you know, in the year, in the seven, early 1700s, it wasn't so unusual uh, for uh, newborns to perish, nevertheless, that's 10 children. I mean, this is really uh, an unbelievable loss. And so um, it's uh, basically, as uh, Todd Wilson said at the beginning, you can find the entire spectrum of human uh, emotions in the music of Bach. Um, it's just such unbelievably rich music, and he was uh, pretty much unanimously nominated by the greatest composers in history to follow as being the greatest composer who had ever lived. Um, the next suite I would like to perform, the D minor suite of Bach, um, is uh, a very haunting, uh, very solemn and a very and, and it has a lot of feelings and expressions of of grief and loss and it d minor as a key uh was a key that bach used to write his famous violin chaconne in the d minor partita and um and he wrote that uh right after the death of his first wife um it's amazing how much bach can say in these uh, dance movements that are relatively strict in terms of form, but that's uh, his true genius. Um, particularly the Sarabond, uh, you really, there, there's an emptiness there that's very haunting and, and telling in terms of, of music. And, and continuing on what I said at the beginning of this concert, in terms of how you can tell um, a great composer and, and a composer that really can express uh, such a uh, the, the complete spectrum of human emotions. I mean, you take a, a group of pieces such as these Bach cello suites, or you take the Opus 18 Beethoven quartets, or you take the the uh, Mozart Haydn quartets, and you just see how each piece is totally different from the other one and has its own very unique and individual story to tell. So without saying any more, I hope you enjoy this D minor suite of J.S. Bach.
Thank you very much. In 2018, I started an initiative in Northeast Ohio called Bach for Humanity. My idea at the time was that it seemed like in our public discourse we were no longer listening very well to one another uh, politically, Republicans and Democrats, and in other ways, and perhaps um, um, in a broader context uh, across the world as well. And I felt I wanted to do something in, a, in my uh, small way, in, a, in this, my sphere of influence. And it occurred to me that the music of J.S. Bach was a unifying force that had been bringing people together for more than 300 years uh, with his message, the message in the music, of love, triumph, hope, and compassion, predominantly among, of course, many, many other things. And so I started performing uh, not only these cello suites, but the uh, Bach sonatas and partitas originally for solo violin in my own transcriptions on the cello. And what started off as a cello challenge uh, later became something much more meaningful uh, with these pieces providing a very different axis or viewpoint of the great composer from the cello suites. Um, and the idea was to um, deliver this music not only to uh, classical music lovers in uh, conventional performance uh, venues, uh, which I also did, but also to take this music to places where perhaps Bach wasn't heard as often, uh, whether it be retirement uh, communities or education, uh, pl places of education, schools, schools for the arts, 
uh, community organizations, homeless shelters, and um, I found it to be a very eye-opening, rewarding, and wonderful experience uh, sharing this music and interacting with people um, in a most beautiful way, which is music. And um, there are many experiences um, from those uh, couple years that I will never forget. And it is my hope that I will have the opportunity to take Bach for Humanity, um, to export it outside of Northeast Ohio um, as much as, and of course I will be here performing in various capacities, solo playing, uh, playing with the Cleveland Orchestra, but I also would like to share this uh, music um, elsewhere, and not only, again, in uh, conventional settings, but in outreach activities and perhaps in places where uh, people may not be as familiar with the music of Bach. Um, and that brings us to the last and final of the six cello suites, the suite in D major. And D major is a very favorite key among the composers, uh, certainly for stringed instruments, because the D string falls nicely in the middle of both the violin and the cello, the second string on the cello, the third string on the violin. And um, because of that, you have a lot of, of beautiful overtones that help the sound projection. So it's a friendly key in that regard. Um, this particular suite was written for, we think, a five-string cello or piccolo cello, and um, which means uh, that there was an E string to help with some of the higher passage work. So uh, on a four-string cello, this is the only suite of the six that really goes into the stratosphere or, or the upper register or what we call thumb position as cellists. Um, musically significant D major, a key of celebration, a key of victory, of joy, of triumph. And it really sounds in this piece like uh, Bach has experienced some kind of triumph and is expressing it here. It's the prelude with, uh, in 12-8 with the, trip, the nonstop triplets for the most part, uh, sort of De being depictive of angels dancing in heaven, perhaps. Um, a lot of this suite sounds like perhaps it's already in the next world. Um, it it's, uh, focuses on beauty of sound and um, on, uh, I would say, lofty musical ideals. And perhaps um, it, we can uh, use this piece to imagine what the world will be like once we have triumphed over COVID-19 and have everybody healthy for the most part worldwide again, and for, uh, depending on what you believe in, maybe what the experience might be beyond. So I hope you enjoy this uh, sort of what I call is the high point of the six cello suites uh, in many different ways.
on behalf of all of us who've had the extraordinary experience of listening to these wonderfully communicative and human performances of these timeless pieces. Thank you so much, Mark, for giving us one of the truly nourishing experiences of this unusual summer. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's, it's, it's our pleasure for sure. Uh, if you feel that this is something you'd like to uh, donate to, you can do so by following the prompt at the bottom of the screen, or you can send a check to Music and Art at Trinity Cathedral, 2230 Euclid Avenue, Cleveland, Ohio, 44115. Lastly, I'd like to uh, encourage you to uh, mark your calendars and plan to join us in this same format on Friday, the 18th of September, again, 7 o'clock, when we'll offer a, a different program. This is going to be chamber music by three Bs. And in this case, the Bs are Nadia Boulanger, Johannes Brahms, and Benjamin Britten. So I can promise you it's going to be a really wonderful and rewarding program. So uh, mark your calendars for that occasion. Thank you for joining us here at Trinity tonight, and I look forward to being together again on the 18th of September. Stay safe and well in the meantime, and uh, we'll see you then. Thank you. Good night.